Sorry about that. Here's part two. Um, so here's a good picture for you of Goneril Reagan and Cordelia. And you can assume here is Cordelia. Um, so once Cordelia confesses nothing, I have, I cannot compare my love to my sisters. Uh, he disowns Cordelia. Um, fortunately for Cordelia, Kent tries to speak on her behalf. Um, and he decides, well, he, as in Lear, Cornwall and Albany, with my two daughters, Dowers, digest this third. Um, he is going to give the third part of his land to his son-in-law. So Cornwall and Albany. Can you see my screen here? Cornwall and Albany, his son-in-laws, he's going to divide that third piece of land uh, to them. The catch to this here, and I let's see, do I have a... Um, he says um, he needs to provide, they need to provide a hundred knights. Um, so this is kind of where it gets tricky because it's becoming a game for Lear. So Lear is kind of going on a power trip at this point. Um, now, jumping a little ahead... Um, let's see. I don't know. Um, we have Kent. So he's distributed his land. And let's go back to Kent here. Um, Lear is not happy with Kent. Kent, on thy life, no more. Kent, my life I never held, but as a pawn to wage against thy enemies, no fear to lose it, thy safety being motive. Out of my sight. So he's saying, you know what? I don't want you in my life anymore. Banishes Kent. So now two people have been banished. And his next uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The next thing he needs to do is uh, marry off Cordelia. And you can kind of see I've already told you what happens. But um, he says that he needs to do something. He needs to marry off Cordelia. So he in comes uh, the Duke of Burgundy and the King of France. So basically he says, um, Burgundy, um, I'll speak to you. You have been competing with the King of France for my daughter. Um, what are you going to bring as a dowry? And if you don't know what a dowry is, it's basically like a payment um, to a husband by the father-in-law at the time of marriage. And that's the definition they give me here. Um, and a lot of times in uh, Indian cultures, they do this as well. They have a payment that they bring forward for the marriage um, and they pay it um, dependent on the payment. Um, maybe a marriage might be more appealing. In this case, he's going to ask Burgundy and the King of France what their dowry will be. And Burgundy says, your Highness, I crave no more than hath your Highness offered, nor will I tender less. Um, and then France is going to say, well, um, it is very strange that she even but now was your best object. The argument of your praise, balm of your age, most best, most dearest, should in this trice of time commit a thing so monstrous to dismantle so many folds of favor. So he thinks, well, this is a very odd her crime must be extreme and monstrous, or else earlier love for her wasn't as true as it seemed. Um, so they, oddly, um, he comes forward with Cordelia as a bride, and there is no dowry for her. So that's pretty interesting, because now he's very upset. Um, Burgundy says he will only marry her if she comes with her promised bride price, but again, there's no dowry. But France, the king of France, he's impressed by her boldness and her uh, honesty, and he will marry her despite having no dowry. So she marries king of France. So as he banishes her, she's going to go off to France. And there goes my time. Um, so this concludes Act 1, Scene 1. Um, as the scene starts ending, Goneril and Reagan are going to kind of talk and how they're going to plan how they're going to get rid of Cordelia and Kent. Uh, but that concludes Act 1, Scene 1. If you have questions, you can reach out to me.